Hi everyone, in this video, I will go through Azure Data Lake storage solution. So first I connect to the portal, then click on create a resource. So we are going to create a storage account that will be used a data lake storage in a hierarchical namespace. So here you can select storage account, click on storage account, click on create. So this is group I'm going to create a new one. So put data like this is tier one. Choose account name so uh, and to give an account name so this is um, data lake stress account zero one okay already taken but they put zero one let me give zero three is tvs Selecting geo redundant storage make read access to daily data available in the event of regional unavailability. Click on next advance in here. So storage key. Get all these details like uh, if I say item or topics, you can click on information bar to get more information on that topic. So now here is the data lake storage gen 2. So so I am selecting that one. Networking, I am just mm, mm, not changing anything so all default data protection on default yeah you can set that up how many days it will you know that based on retention time encryption tagging then click on review and create so click on create validation passed so click on create button so it's initializing now it's submitting deployment so deployment is in progress. So let me pause here. So deployment succeeded. So now let's go to here. You can select this one, go to resource. So display this um, like um, uh, data like storage account details information. Now, going to create a containers here in this storage account. For that, here is the containers under data storage. So, click on containers. And here, that command bar, click on container. So, new container blade, give a name. So, let me give a name and data. and access level is private and no anonymous access and click on create so it's creating or successfully created storage container so you can see that container is here so now This container, click that container, get into that container. There's an option like different options there uh, to the command bar. So I'm going to create two directories here. One is output. So 
uh, one directory is here. I'm going to create another directory named logs. Get save. So now uh, I'm going to upload data to this container. So click on output, like open the output con like directory. Now I'm going to add a data here. So click on now click on upload button here. Select the file. And you can select overwrite if files already exist. So click on upload. So file is uploading here. So now you can open that file or delete that file. Yeah. And you can see that file here also. So now when I'm going here, I just would like to show you other thing that if you would like change the tire like tier, so you can change tier like hot tier, cold tier or archive tier. So what tier is just uh, to get the data, you know, instantly kind of thing. Cold tier is just uh, normally don't access uh, and archive is like um, you don't access at all so that can be once a month you can think that way then you can put into this tier and archive tier is um, which you normally don't access by people because you need to um, know that um, if you put the data into archive tier you cannot immediately access you need to load into um, uh, either hot or cool tier before accessing data So cancel here. So now we will go through um, event streaming solution. So for that first, um, let's create an event hubs. So go to home, create a resource. And search for events hub click on create so events hub is a cloud based <coughs> event uh, ingestion platform for a highly scalable events streamings to support high volume real time event processing So here, create namespace um, blade. Under the basic tab, select the resource group. So I can select the uh, data lake one. And give a namespace. Give a namespace name so events have namespace so I can put in event hub namespace 01 is not valid so I can give three value must be between six and fifty characters long so I have to put a name on this one one two three four Students. Press enter. You can select the standard one. 
throughput units we get 15 others value I am taking default one it's the view and create so it's validating So validation succeed. Let's click on create. So Azure Event Hub's architecture it supports various event producers for input, uh, uh, which is known as an ingestion. Uh, and various uh, events receives for output which is known as consumptions. So still deployment is in progress. So we'll go through with um, ingestion, ingestion and consumption. So it's done, you can click here or you can click here, go to resources. So now mm, we'll go through mm, configure mm, an event hub mm, for event strings. So for that, um, from your event hub page, namespace, event hub namespace. Let me go event hub. Under entities, you see event hub. So click on event hub and here plus button on tab click there and give a name so event hub give a name like um, what you can see that you can what you can use what you cannot use so information is there so event hub 01 there is partition count and I'm just taking on the default then click on create so event hub creation successfully created event hub so you can see that event hub is created click on event hub and here is access control so to give access to Users so here grant access to this resource. Click on add role assignment. So for fast, what I can do, I need to create a member. I did not create that. So let's go through here like all resources let me go to Azure Active Directory go to users let me create a totally new users create for event how user event how event how no groups or selected settings just creating a user so now let's go back to event hubs on the resource tab here and 
drill assignment. Search for event hubs data owner. So here Azure Event Hub, there are different roles here. Owner, receiver, and sender. So I'm going to set up owner. Next. So here you need to select the member. So let me select Mark and assign that one. Select. Click on review and assign. So added rule assignment. Now let's go back to home page. Now let's create a stream analytics jobs for event streaming. So we need to create a stream analytics jobs for that one. So from this marketplace, search for stream and the analytics. Yeah, stream analytics job. Click on create. So give a job name, so stream reality job. Select the resource group. Location. Streamers. Hosting environment is cloud. Streaming units, you can put values in between 1 to 192. So I give a little more. Then click on uh, create. So Azure Stream Analytics is a high volume event streaming service. Uh, and this is designed for real time analytics in, in the cloud. So deployment in progress here. Deployment succeed, go to resource. So here, under the job topology, you can see that inputs and outputs there. So first, um, click on input page in the command bar. And you see that add stream input. So click there. Select Event Hub and in this Event Hub blade, give um, or pass the value. So put a an yes. So it's an event stream. Event stream from subscription. So name space is selected. And consumer group, um, we can select uh, create a new. So consumer group zero one. Then what are the information? So give the alias. Description hub name is this is the existing hub name. Then hub consumer group give a new name. Authentication mode. You can select connect string. 
then it's having a policy so we can create a new policy so let me see then policy don't worry about that one now Except so added input here. Successful connection test. So connection to input succeed. Now let's um, under this job topology. Let's um, go with output. From here, this um, common bar select add, and then select um, blob storage data like gen 2 and give a value here so output alias I just give that output data container is data authentication method is connect string and path we have created directory output minimum rows how many rows it will pick up equal 500 and give it time how many hours and minutes it will take so we can give like if we want 10 minutes so we can just give or set 10 minutes and here click on save so azure portal is going to perform a connection test successful connection test and uh, so here yeah, you see that uh, it's tested for input both input and output close that one now we'll design data factory so azure data factory is a cloud-based data movement platform um, uh, to manage an etl uh, process so it is extract, transform, and load process. That's mainly to move data in between on-premise, on-premises and cloud data sources. So first, Data Factory moves the data by using pipeline, which are workflows that you can schedule. Pipelines use copy data activities to move the data. And pipeline can also include multiple copy data activities that contain data from different types of data stores. So let's create an Azure Data Factory. For that, let's go to Home, click on All Resources, uh, Home, Create a Resource. From this marketplace, we look for Data factory. data factory then click on create
So on the data factory blade under this basic tab, let's um, give a resource group name. Customers give a name. So we can give data factory. So DF zero one version is V two. Next. Yeah, git configuration there, but um, configure git later. We are not going to configure that git here. So um, configure git later, then networking. Take all the defaults. Advance all the defaults, but here basic tab is the same cross sign. It must already be taken. So in zero three. Oh, that also taken. Okay. X two three. This time it's okay. So default click on review and create. Let me pause it. Okay, data factory is down. Oh no, that's validation only pass. So click on create. So that initializing deployment. Submitting deployment stage now. And it's in progress. So you see that deployment is in progress now. So let me pause here. So deployment succeeded message is here. So go to resource. So we have created an Azure data factory. So after that, you see this is the landing page for Azure data factory. Now here is that open Azure data factory studio. So click on open. So it will open a new window. So now we are going to create a new pipeline. So for that, you can click on new and pipeline. You can also do that from this orchestrate option. So click orchestrate button. So let me clean the old, some old things sitting there, I think, because I can see that publish one. So let me go there. Uh, maybe some changes still there. So publishing here. Can you see anything there? Pipeline one. Should have okay. Ignore that one for now. So here we see that the properties icon and to hide that one, we can just click this mm, properties icon window. To get that more space in design surface area so to create a new pipe like activities underneath that is the move and transform there is a two options copy data and data flow first we are going to work on copy data so we can drag that one to this designer surface Then click on source, click new, uh, type is data set is HTML, HTTP, click continue, format type is delimited text, click continue. Then here, Link service, I'm going to add a link service. So click new and base URL. This is the page that I'm going to use URL. Uh, passing the URL here. 
and authentication type is anonymous for now and click on create so it's there is a message that is going to be created so here you can see but from here first first line is a header here you see that that, that is the header so click on header and to get the data from that um, url um, I'm going to use request method is to get the data get method click ok so now uh, let's preview the data so you can see that country land area all those information is there so click on close so data has been previewed now let's set up for the sync properties so uh, from this um, uh, data activity settings pane um, from here click on uh, sync and then select new so next uh, is the data set and we need to select a data source our data source is Azure SQL database so select that one click on continue on this set properties page you see that name is here so we are considering the default name and then click the link service uh, click new and we can also but it's already there so we can select that one but the database that we are going to use and the table name that um, we are going to use is uh, is a country settings staging so that one and connection type connection stores click ok now we need to do mapping so for that mapping page mm, from this mm, data activities here you see that the setting space there is a mapping page so click on mapping and click import schemas so from here we can see the mapping rule from each source field to target field so that has been done now um, let's make uh, create a data flow activities so drag this data flow and put it to designer surface area uh, set up uh, settings for the data flow so click on settings okay let's debug that one data flow debug is enabled so we enable that one so uh, i did that in, in my last lab so click there uh, so that you know what to do so data flow debug then you need to define the values click okay so it will be enable the data flow actually you will see that um, it's going to enable so debug option option So data flow is enabled so now from here uh, select the data flow uh, so create a new one so click new so it's get a default name now here you see that add source so we're going to add the source here so click here add source it has got um, a default name then select the data sets so Azure SQL table one uh, and we can check if we want test connection so 
actually testing connection successful anyway yeah, that we know now click on here to um, add a filter so um, click here if you'd like to add any filter so you can add that on here for an example we'd like to uh, do some modifier so we can do as an example we are doing sort operation so when you select the sort operation then you see that it's getting a stream name incoming stream and option we can put that it's space sensitive or any other option then select the column so as an example let me select the column country we want ascending order so I select that one Now mm, we need to set up uh, sync. So right with the filter, we are going to sync option that it will load the data. So destination. So set up destination. Yeah, so it has got the default name. We are fine with that one. So data set is screw table one. And if we want new one, we can also do new one. Mm, then let me see that it's a new one. And so let's check this on source. Uh, Just to make sure we did the right one. Link service is new. Subscription. Authentication tab as your admin. Just check test connection and click on create. So, here table name is country staging. Okay. So yes, query is good. You can see that sorting into country table. Now sync, create a new one. New. table is my country rating and click OK so far I have set that up now let's go to pipeline
we can just jump so now we are making a data flow so creating a pipeline between copy data and data flow one So now click on debug. It will take uh, around a minute. When that's done, then you will see the output uh, here down below. So you, you can see that output pages mm, appear here. So it's cute. So now here is that the button for details. You can click on that to get more information on this. So from this detail page, if you see here that it reads around 215 uh, rows and it written to the target um, some like uh, service is also 215. So I can close this window. Now if you do the data flow, detail space, you can also get information like how many rows are written and, and this is only the first thing but you can also get for all strips like a source sort and sync so those three operations you can see that one the data flow here so you can get all the details now if i go to you can also check that from the uh, database level so for that, let me go to the database. Select from execute. You can get that six hundred forty five. So six hundred forty five rows there. Now if you go back this um, author option, you will see that um, one here there is a publish or so unless you publish, um, it will not published. So that means if you close this session, it will be discarded. So click on publish all and from this side window, you will see that pending changes. So if you click on publish. So publishing completed, successfully published. So you cannot see anything here under that um, manage section like that was in sitting there uh, to publish. So now to clean resource, um, what you can do, you can just go through one by one. So if you go to home, author section uh, from this data flow, and click delete then delete data flow then use the data source so you can delete one by one so you see that we are deleting and it's going to under manage uh, increasing the number delete 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 Pipeline 
do it. So unless we publish, it will not be deleted. So you see that will be deleted. But now you see that there is a publish all, there is a, a menace. So we need to publish that one. And here this window is showing that okay, it's deleted, but it's not published yet. So to publish that one, we need to click on publish. So if there are issues, maybe dependent resources there, we may need to clean that one. So published all, and you see that uh, it's completed and it's clean now. We can see that publish all, publish all. So, um, thank you. Window can get a message, so ignore that one. So we have successfully completed few tasks here. Yeah. First, we, um, we saw how to set up Azure Synapse Analytical or Analytics SQL pool, then Azure Data Lake Storage Solution. And after that, uh, we um, saw how to set up event streaming solution by using an Azure Stream Analytics jobs and um, with Azure Event Hub. After that, we uh, saw how to set up a data pipeline in an Azure Data Factory. And that's all for this lesson. And, uh, thank you. If you like this video, please subscribe to my channel.